start recording number two. So now we'll have part B. So part B starts at 10.56. Nicely so, done. Yeah, there's the window lights. And then for people that are learning to balance your ambient and your flash, I light meter every time I set up. So you, I use my light meter to get the ambient and I bring my speed light in between a half and a full stop above it. Right, that's exactly right. So when you look at Mark's shot, you see it's lit from the, the strobe. You can see the, the, the highlights making the, the chicken glisten and everything, that's the strobe. But if you turn it off, he would have a, a shot that's about a stop or a stop and a half underexposed. And he could take the sliders and photo in uh, Lightroom and make that look good, but it wouldn't have all these shines on it. So thanks, Mark. You're welcome. I think it'd be about time for lunch when you got to that. <laughs> uh, Mark, can I ask you something? Yeah. Uh, you were saying there, you set F8 speed light for ambient? The ambient light yes. from the windows was at F8. F8. And you set the speed light to F10. Yeah. That's a kind of half a stop difference. Isn't yeah. that so? OK. Yeah. But how did you manage that, uh, the shadows detail? How did you set up to F8? You just mirrored that, and you knew that the ambient I... is F8. Yeah. And well, you purposely went up two thirds difference. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because the because the octo box is at the back and it's coming at an angle, so mm -hmm. it's giving the highlights on the top and it's still with the white plate and the tablecloth. You got to remember, oh. I'm, I'm on a table with a tablecloth on it, so that tablecloth is going to give you a little bit of bounce and open up the shadows. Yes, you went eighty twenty, so the 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 balance was eighty percent flash and twenty percent ambient. Yeah, as you say here. Okay. Yeah. Because I always use seventy thirty. That's why I asked you. Okay. Yeah. Nicely yeah. done. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. You're, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I do restaurants, so I do that setup a lot. Yeah, that's nice to use, yes. All right. So, Jan. Is, oh, Greg. Greg. Hey, Greg. Yes. How are you? Good. Very good. Okay, we got golf balls here. Yep. And basically, I'm going to say one light from behind top and yep. then no, no fill because we had no sign of fill over here. I actually and have a black card on the left and a black card in the back. Okay. And so the black card's doing this, giving you a little bit darker here. But when, yep. but when you're dealing with this, of course, then this golf ball's giving you this fill. This right. golf ball's giving you this fill. So it definitely helps with the roundness. Of the of the items, cool. It doesn't it looks to me like it's skewed a little bit, Greg? But yeah, it is. I had to tilt the box up to get the golf balls to roll to one direction, oh, okay. otherwise they move okay. too much. Okay, uh, I, that's it's just side to side. It's like this angle doesn't match that angle. Okay. If I brought the, if I brought the triangle together, it would be over here instead of here. See what I'm saying? Yep. You're a little bit to the side of the box. Really watch that. We're seeing yeah. more of this wall than we are seeing of this wall. If you're shooting something like this, it's got to be absolutely exact. All right, good. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Yeah, golf balls. Rob Reed. I'm here. Hi, Sorry. Rob. Hey. Okay. So you chose a, a very um, uh, hard light for this. Just and that pulled out all your texture here. Very nice. I don't have a behind the scenes, but I can tell you what the setup was when you're ready. Sure, go ahead. Um, I've got very little experience with studio work, and I was using old. Um, halogen work lights and a homemade scrim for the kind of the product photography I have to do for magazine articles. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't really happy with the halogen lights because they were way too hot. 
and also way too large and bulky and hard to work with. So I bought a two uh, cheap Chinese uh, soft boxes with the um, the uh, CFL lights. Yes. And I also bought a boom set, uh, the same same brand, same temperature. I probably um, have the same thing. I got three lights and a boom and three stands. Exactly. Yep. Um, and that's what I had to work with. So uh -huh. and this was actually the first time I'd set everything up. So I had the boom over the top. Um, I talked to Kevin Crichton about how to set this up and he gave me mm -hmm. some advice. I had the boom over the top. I had one soft box directly to the left. I put a reflector, uh, a foam board reflector to the right and a foam board uh, reflector to the front. And then I okay. actually had to handheld the camera because um, I couldn't get the tripod at the right spot to get the angle I needed for the small piece of uh, background material I had. If I wasn't okay. careful, it just, you know, I know I knew I could edit it later, but still it was just, you know, I, I wanted to do as much in camera as I could. Okay. Now you have a, a definite defined shadow here. How high was your softbox from your product here? Uh, as high as I could get it, which was about two feet. Okay. Actually bring it down. Bring it closer. To as close as you can get it and then angle it forward. So if the camera is here. I can't see your hands. I'm doing it over here. Okay. Oh, I see. The camera is here. And you're shooting, well, I should say your, your camera's up here. You're shooting down towards the, the knife. Take, well, here. So right now your, your softbox is probably coming straight down on the knife like that. Yeah. Angle it this way. Okay. So it's brighter here, essentially, than it is here, but it's driving a little bit of the shadow forward. As you do that, you'll pick up all the texture in here. Okay. The Bringing the softbox in closer will eliminate texture because it's a softer light. But as it goes around all these facets, it will give you more texture on this side. So you'll have to finesse it a little bit. But um, but uh, I'm glad to hear that you got the light kit. I'm working with it. Thank yeah, you. I'm hoping I'm. I, I've already been learning a lot just watching the critiques. Um, with those uh, with those soft boxes, you're going to have to get used to adding contrast. They're very, it's a very soft contra non-contrasty light. So you're going to have to be, uh, add some contrast to almost everything you do with them. And how, right? how do I add a, how do I add contrast? Uh, Photoshop, you can use levels or, or, uh, uh channels. Um, don't use a little soft box thing. Um, I will post on the page, on the home page, I will post a link to um, a Photoshop, free Photoshop class, 31 days of Photoshop by Flern, and he'll walk you through the whole thing. That, that would help immensely. Yep. Yep. All right. I got a quick Lyle. question. I yes. have a quick question, friend. The lights that you're using, is it the one light bulb that's either on or off? Correct. Something that you can do to help bring the power down if you need to is go to Walmart, get a white fabric shower curtain because it's the cheapest and cut it so it's a little bit bigger than your soft box. And then you can use some of them binder clips and like double up the diffusion or triple up the diffusion and it will knock down some of the power so that way they're not all coming in at the exact same power. Yeah, I, I, did, problem... I did have one extra uh, diffusion face because I actually have three lights and only use two. And I took the extra diffusion face and put it on the light to the left. So yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Now that's the problem with those lights. Um, the ones I have have three bulbs in them or four bulbs in them. So I can turn one bulb off or two bulbs off, that type of thing. But if you have, if you have the LEDs or, or the ones with the one big curly Q, yeah. they're all the same power. So then you have to move them away that changes your relationship with the size of the softbox and the pro product you're shooting. So, all right, Leo, this is a great shot. Nice texture in here. It's a nice food shot. I love the color here. It looks fresh. Um, a little light coming from the back. That's really, really great. Thanks. And your light is definitely... Uh, 
pretty through here. Look at this. Lights top back, I'm taking it. Well, I got I got two lights. I got one uh, big soft box on the right in kind of close, and then my strip box kind of adding some from the back. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And we can see that nicely through here. We can see that strip box coming right in through here. That's the strip box. Right. That's the soft box. Yeah. Right. It's nicely done, Leo. Thank you. Good clean photo. Good clean uh, food shot. Looks appetizing. Thanks. Mildred. Mildred here. All right. So if we have this many, we have 76 photographs to look. We have 76 photographs next time, guys. Uh, I will give you a heads up. We will probably do the first half, take a half hour break for folks, and then do the second half. So we're still going to look at everybody's pictures, but we'll give people a break. I did not realize it would go this much, but then I, I do enjoy it. Mildred, this is lovely. I love your little shot here. The texture of the bread is cool. The texture of the background is kind of cool. I wish you were here to tell us how you did it. Mm, I'm not sure what that shows us, Mildred. All right. Um, I can't figure that out. You'll have to let us know next time. Christina. Wow. White texture everywhere. Christina here? No? She says she she couldn't wait. She, okay. She had something to do. Uh, I'll, I'll, let, I'll remind her and I'll remind everybody. If you have a soccer game, if you got something that you have to do, you know, you're going to a wedding or getting married that day and you don't want to stick around for the whole thing, just let me know. We'll get you first. We'll get you in there. Uh, you know, life happens for everybody. I don't want anybody to sit around and not get their critique. OK, so just just remind me. I'm happy to do that. Uh, it's a lovely shot, Christina. Uh, and I think that your choice of this one over that one. Um, yeah, I think we've got more texture going on here, more, and it still looks, there's no doubt in any of our minds that it's white. I would say split the difference. This is too bright, losing a lot. This might be too dark up in here. I'd split the difference in it. Uh, okay. Can, can, can you say something about the very small specular highlight that's below? And to the left of the softbox highlight, because I really no on each of the on each of the bubbles like that. There's no. There's a, a dot, just a dot. Yeah, that one. Where does that well, come from? That is. Um, look, I'm going to look at the. Well, see, she's not here to answer the question. The question would be, would, was the light on in the room? If the light's on in the room, you won't get enough ex to expose this, but that is bright, shiny, white gloss, right? It will still reflect that pinpoint light in the ceiling. I don't see anything else on here that would cause that unless there's something up here. So I would say, the light is on in the room and because, because it's a, uh, an exposure uh, with the um, piece of an old lamp and black and white, do, 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 do. because she's shooting it with the soft box coming down from the top, as you can see here, look at the angle of this. This light here is somewhere over my left shoulder. There's nothing in her picture that indicates that. So that's what I think it is. Something back here is on. Whenever you're shooting something very, very shiny like this, you got to make sure you have everything covered. I actually build, I'll actually put four by eight uh, v, v cards around my set, build a room for the set inside the studio so that I can control every aspect of that still life. Very good. Terry McDermott. 
Hey, Don, how are you? Very good, Terry. This is a lovely shot. Well, it was going to have a piece of jewelry with it, but the rose fell apart. So I love how the light's coming from the back and pulling in these colors that are not evident, you know, right up front, mm -hmm. um, right in here. Yep. It's really pretty. Um, you should try the same type of shot with a focus stack. Oh, just, okay, to, yep. just to see the difference. Not that it would be better. Yep. It just would be different. Yep. Just to see the difference, but don't focus stack in that. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let that go a little soft. Yeah, I kind of wanted it to fade away to softness, but I usually would do. Oh, well, how did you like this? Um, so it's on a little table with a um, sliding glass door behind behind the rose. It is bright, cloudy day. Okay. And um, I had a fill card in front of me. And because it was lit from the back, it was very dark in the front. So I was using spot meter to um, bring out the lightness in the front. Okay. So yeah, so yeah. it was just cloudy light. <laughs> yeah, just let, the, yeah. just let the background blow out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Thank you. A friend yeah, gave you me a rose. So we'll, this could be a, a great opening for a series of something like that. It's really Ooh. pretty. Mm. Yeah. That was a really old, um, old school fragrant rose, so it didn't last long. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks Maybe, for having uh, the class again. Oh, you certainly. Thanks for sticking around for two hours. Are you kidding? <laughs> Someone's stuck around even longer. Mikala. Is it Mikala or Mikala? Maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe Mikala did not stick around. Ah. Uh, Great texture here, Mikola. Shallow depth of field helps emphasize this little slice of focus here and texture very nicely. And then everything kind of goes soft up in here and goes soft to the foreground. But we see it nicely and it's backlit by daylight, it looks like. Backlit by daylight. So uh, the backlighting will always help you show texture, always. Very good. Carmen, oh my God, it's gotta be past Carmen's bedtime. Carmen, are you here? Yes. Oh, yes. there you are. Maybe I thought maybe you fell asleep at the, at the computer there. Well, yeah, not, not good timing, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is just gorgeous. Carmen is a professional photographer in Antibes, France, which is French Riviera, am I right? Yep, south of France. South of France. Um, and so she has a beautiful studio there and also some amazing light, amazing natural light there. Mm -hmm. uh, so which is this, Carmen? This is a, com a combination of LED and natural light. Oh, okay. Is this your portable LED? Yes, uh, this is, um, these are heads, LED heads that you can get for your AD200s. Oh, okay. So, so I can replace, you know, take off the regular flash bulb and then slide on these uh, LED heads, and then they're they have their adjustable power. They have like three different levels. That's nice. I have these yeah. little I have these little cheap ones that you can plug in, and it's got a battery in it. The uh -huh. battery run, runs forever. I mean, I can get three hours off these things easy. Yeah. Um, and I'm taking them everywhere with me. I've actually put them in my put one now in each of my bags. They're just perfect for stuff like this love this i love the color my goodness yeah i was i was wanting to do kind of i was trying to play off the soft texture of the petal and the smooth texture of the cherry yeah it's beautiful um everybody hang tight for a second hang tight just for a second i'm going to put the video on pause this meeting is being recorded okay uh, i love it Carmen, just a really pretty photograph. Oh, oh, I sent the wrong picture. Darn. Okay, so this is the picture you were. Is it? Take. I had. A, that's the picture that I took, and then I annotated it with uh, with stuff on it. Okay. So, so it was natural light coming from the left, and behind the the uh, the scrim, there is an LED light through an umbrella. Okay. And I, I put the scrim on because I was seeing the ribs of the umbrella in this in the cherry. Ah, okay. 
Okay. And then right. I had a, another LED in the overhead, that guy coming down. And right where, I don't know if you can, you can see, if you get close to the flower, I, I took everything down and then I realized, oh crap, I didn't do a, a behind the scenes. So I had the cherries hanging from that, uh, suspend that little arm over the flower there. So oh, yeah, you okay. can see where the fish wire what is. The fish wire thing is still connected uh, there. All right. Um, but, and then the camera, I had already taken the camera off. And I mean, I was like, I was, I was pressed for time. So I was like, okay, let's get moving. Let's get this picture processed. Excellent. Looks great. Yeah. So it was focused act. And then I took it through um, color effects for the pro contrast. <clears throat> and I really kind of like, I thought I put the gold reflector in the background because it was pretty. Warm. Yeah, it was really pretty, really pretty. Kind of a warm green. Nice. Beautiful, okay. Carmen. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry. Hi, Don. Hey, Jerry. I really like this shot, man. I think this is very nice. Thank you. I like this out of focus background with a little bit of a highlight back here on it. Um, the avocados look great. The wood is great. This is, this is, uh, the avocado looks great. Everything, even the, the little shine right here on the, the seed. Um, it looks, it looks like it was just freshly opened and yet I don't think it really was, was it? Or did you use a stand in or how did you do that? I, I actually, um, yeah, I tried to do everything first without cutting it. But even when I cut it, it, it went so quickly. I cut it again a second time. Ah, okay. Before I took the final shot. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, well, on these uh, when you're shooting avocados or something that can get dry real fast, you can rub them with a little bit, you know, a little bit of a third avocado somewhere, just get them moist again. Uh, but your your highlight looks great there, um, all the way through here. It's a really nice shot. The only thing that bothers me, honestly, is that whatever that is back there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. actually the table on the reach. Yeah. yeah, I'd get rid of that. I'd just pull your pull your background down to it. Just leave the, okay. leave the board. Uh, all of this looks really good in here. And the texture of the avocados looks great. You can see the knife cutting it this way. Cool, man. Thanks. Nice shot. Very well composed, too. You could you could make a square out of this thing. You could do a, a long shot out of it you can do a vertical out of it you can leave it as it is it's really nice okay let's try it out let's see how you lit it big grid to the side big big gridded box and no other lights just the softball just the uh fill oh, yeah there is a light on the background but it's behind that right. grid right. you can't okay. actually see it there it's an 8200 it's back here. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. That's nice, sir. Just to open up the background. Yeah. That's really nice. Thank you. Uh-huh. Looks good. Patricia. Hi, Don. Hi. Oh, really pretty, too. What are those? Are those... Yeah, uh, they're figs. Oh, figs. Okay. Your light's real pretty through here. It's defined. Everything is nicely defined through here. We can see this fig in front of that fig, etc. Compositionally, the only thing I would have done is had you bring it more to the front of the of the cloth, so that the cloth wasn't doing this. In other words, this is your subject. We've got too much foreground. Bring your subject to the corner. I love the lighting. I, I did. I did. I did wonder about that, but I'm not used to doing composition really for yeah. still life stuff. So I think your um your composition is perfect, except that this thing here should have been sitting right right there. That big right there, actually to the point of going off the cloth and over the table. A little bit of overlap. You see what I'm saying? A little overlap right, okay. would not hurt this shot because right now it's being framed in by the, the towel. We bring it to the front, let this one stick out over a little bit, let this one stick out over a little bit, and it just makes it more cohesive that this is our star. 
that this was our hero. Okay. Yeah, because I wasn't sure. I did think about just cropping it in to cut off, but then I, I kind of was losing the edge of the uh, yeah. Yeah. cloth. And I didn't oh, that know whether that a, really worked either. <laughs> no, that would be a very, very difficult uh, Photoshop thing. No, I mean, there are, there's uh, one, two, three, four, there's five figs here. You probably have four of them still left. Go get another one and do it again because it's a really nice shot. Make it work. I, okay? I actually, for once, have it still set up. <laughs> oh, Usually good. it's all packed away, so <laughs> I actually and, can redo it. <laughs> yes, so we got a light behind this one. Light behind each of them. Up the, there's a light behind that white thing as well. Okay, this is a, like a plexiglass or a plastic? Uh, it's actually a, an artist's canvas kind of thing. Oh, okay. Well, that so works. it kind of diffuses it a bit. Yeah, it does. It's really, I love this little highlight right, right here. Just that mm -hmm. little edge there. And the way that this one gets a little edge here, probably from the light back here, but also maybe bouncing up from the white towel. Um, there's a lot of delicate little things within the shop that are nice. I would, that's an unusual anomaly. It's probably normal for a fig, but it doesn't appear anywhere else. So I'd take that out. Yeah, probably. I did yeah. say that and I wasn't too sure. <laughs> yep. All right, very good. Okay, great. All right, yeah. thank you. Good job. Yeah. And Seashell by Asha. Hey, Don. Hi, Asha. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How about you? Very good. This is very pretty, Asha. Pretty shell, for one thing. The texture, you know, you've got the big texture, all of these spines, but this is where it fascinates me. You've got it down in here just perfectly. We really know what this, this shell feels like. This is pretty light. Got enough fill from the right side. We're not going to think we're going to we'll take a look and see how you did it. Enough fill from the right side that it's standing out, but there's no doubt that our lighting is coming from this side. That's uh, so it gives us a real uh, feel of what the, the shot should be. Are you on someone else's computer? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, because that's not how I spell. Um, Asha, so <laughs> that's cool. Let's take a look at your behind the scenes. Oh, oh, this is clever. You add a little one from the top. Now, what is that? What did that do? Did that give you something more in here? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So this was kind of like a, it was going way too dark. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I like it. It, I, I, there's a, I'm a very fond of very simple photographs. I'm a, a great fondness for simplicity. I think it's very, very cool. Thank you. All right, very good. Alan Mason, Alan. Hi, Don. You stuck around to the end? Yeah. Dude, I've been I've, I've been kicked off. I've been kicked out three times already from oh, from this geez. evening. I don't know what it is. I suppose it's my computer that's not uh, sort of performing well. But yeah, yeah. Well, Alan is our is our last image, folks, and uh, two and a half hours into it. So, uh, okay. So we've got the old sewing machine texture right here. Let's get that thing going. Right in here, the threads the cables and all that stuff. Now the front of this is going a little dark. Uh, I don't see a behind the scenes shot. So did you, I don't think- No, there had... isn't one. I, 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 I had one before, but I, I, um, I took the shot from the front. I had the light in the front and I've had my whole beat yes and everything. And I decided it wasn't going to work. And I put the light to the side and I never had enough time to to get my um, my BTS in for that, you know, for this shot. But okay. it is off. the The light is uh, fairly very close to the left uh, where this yarn is, 
and it's behind as well. So I think that's why there's too much shadow on the on the front of the of the machine. And it, it looks to me like you tried to make up for that by brightening it because this is I would that's a little bit too bright. So we're losing texture. There's no there. Photoshop. There's no po there's no post in this at all. It's just ah, as okay. is. It's shot straight out of camera. Okay. Well, I'm going to do this over here. Come on. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. Uh, Okay, this is our last shot. I'm going to do this. We're in Photoshop now. You should be seeing Photoshop. And I'm going to, uh, I'm not, I think bringing it down, I would want to do in Lightroom. But I was talking about Nick earlier. The Nick, I call my magic fill card. So I'm going to use Nick's Vivesa. Okay, something happened. There we go. Nix Vivesa tool. And I think that Vivesa is going to, I may have to share Vivesa in a second when it loads here. Vivesa is a magical tool. I, the reason I bought Nick, um, the reason I got Nick to begin with was Vivesa. And the reason I, uh, that when I, when they went to a, where you had to buy it, the reason I bought it was Vivesa. And I'll say, because I'm always doing selected um, bright and dark. So you guys, are you guys seeing Vivesa or not? Still seeing Photoshop? Just Photoshop. Still on Photoshop. Okay. All Photoshop right. only. Just Photoshop. Right. Photoshop. So now you should be seeing Vivesa. Correct. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to set a, uh, a control point here, and uh, let's see here. Oh, did they change Vivesa again? Oh, they didn't do that, did they? They did. They changed it again. I should be able to go out here and take this and put it right there. Uh, and then I'm going to take this little control point, move it right down to about there. Now, do you see it's covered most of this dark area? This way, it's only it's really gonna pick up this brown that I've got here. You can make it a little bit smaller, right about there. Now I'm gonna go down here to my, my tool panel here. I go to the brightness and I can brighten that. See that? Obviously not gonna do that much of it. Yep. I'm just gonna do it right about there. I'm gonna hold the option key down, click it, and then take that option key over here and click it with the option key down and move it over there and click it one more time with the option key down over here. So now I've brightened up the front of that thing pretty nicely. I'm gonna draw a box around it and I'm going to group them and they've changed the grouping thing again. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, I, oh, they're all yellow. Okay, so now if I do brightness and darkness, they all go together. You see that? So right. I can yeah, actually yeah. change this thing very well here. Then with a little dodging and burning, I can bring it back. This is this is an amazing tool, folks. It's just an amazing tool. Put another it's one right on top. It's a very expensive tool, though, isn't it, Don? It's very expensive to buy. It's about one and a half thousand, isn't it? Nick? I think one it's and about one and a half thousand. Yeah. One and a half thousand dollars? Oh, no, no I, was just on their, I was just on their website. It's uh, now going for 143. 143. Oh, 100, okay. 
Okay. So I've taken this Take bright, off a note. <laughs> bright, this real bright area here. And again, I'm going to go down here to brightness and I'm going to take it down. I take it down a lot. Oh, it's not moving. It can get yeah, real icky real fast, but we can just give it a little more. So you can sit and play with this thing. The, the thing you've got to remember about it is that when I put the control point on that thing there, And then I use my bright, I don't know why it went dark, guys. Why did it do that? It's not supposed to do that. I can, if you saw what it did here, it mostly only affected the yellow. So you can control what it's doing without it affecting anything else. If you sit here long enough with this, and uh, I haven't responded to you long enough, you can actually really, really do a lot with it. Uh, especially if, like I say, you're in a situation where you just don't have any uh, fill, you know? Uh, you can yes. go back in this way. It's, it's, uh, you can do the same thing with a brush in Lightroom, but this, when you brush in Lightroom, you're brushing globally the whole area, right? With this, you can isolate that gold bring it up, you can isolate this blue here in Kingstar and adjust the blue, maybe make it more teal or whatever, but you can work with just those colors. You can't do that in Photoshop, it's more global. When you paint an area, the whole area goes up or bright now. Mm -hmm. uh, Don, just before we go, uh, uh, and, thank, and thanks for your, thanks for this. What is, is this uh, P52 thing that you're talking about? Project 52. Um, oh, Project 52. Yeah. Project 52 is a course where we do assignments and critiques every week. The assignments are real life photo assignments. We've got a lot of members here too that, that have taken mm -hmm. it. They're real life photo assignments, not made up like... Um, you know, leading lines or the color red or find the letter A, all those things. Those are all fun things to do. We give you real assignments like a cover of a magazine where the masthead has to go and you have to shoot around the masthead. Um, it's a full year program. It sponsors this. The reason I do this class, if I'm going to be totally honest, uh, is the reason I do this is I'm hoping that two or three of you guys go, well, this is really fun. I want to keep doing this. And you join the class, which is starting up in about uh, starting up in about four or five weeks, uh, sometime in uh, uh, late July, early August, we'll be starting up again. So, you know, and I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, who is this that asked me the question? It's Alan. Alan, Alan, I, I didn't send you a check or anything to, to do that, did I? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, um, but that's that's the that's the thing it's it's a class i do you can find it over at uh like like well here we're doing a deep dive into the business book when you when you join the class you get the business book which is a real book book here it's a book so you get to you know go through it and there's right. notes and everything but we're we do a deep dive into it uh, video so everybody's on the same page we're really training you to make money as a photographer and uh, whether you're going to do it full-time or part-time but it's at project 52 pro 2016.com that'll take you to the, the class you can learn more about that there you can send me a note on facebook um, uh, or you can make note of uh, let's see we got carmen uh, yeah i was just going to pipe in i was just going to pipe in and say that P52 has been an invaluable, as I am a professional photographer and I signed up for it and I have learned a boatload uh, and it's for every level. There is, don't, don't mm -hmm. feel like that you don't know enough or you'll, you'll, you'll get, you'll get help at, at appropriate to your level, which, I, which is what I think is amazing about Don's way of uh, guiding us through all of the assignments and the reviews. That's it. You didn't, he didn't send me a check either. 
uh, we got oh, and audio, audio and yeah, just... I, I, as an amateur photographer i i i thought the uh, the the class was a was a real gas yes a lot of work i learned a lot and and in fact the, the interesting thing about it is whenever i run into a professional photographer and we start uh, talking i i bring up the uh, Project 52, and when I tell them what kind of work you had to do, you you wouldn't believe the look on their face. No, there's, um, I'll, I'm going to say this, this is not marketing hype. There's no other program on the internet that's run this way. These are live critiques. This is not, you buy the course and you get a bunch of videos to look at. Those are fine. You learn a lot from them too. But I'm there every week to review, to make it better, and uh uh, we do 52 different assignments and it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's a blast for me. Um, I almost stopped doing it uh, because it, it's, you know, the hardest thing about anything that we do folks is marketing uh, and uh, you know, finding the reach. I'm not a famous guy. I don't do a whole lot of stuff online. I'm not like, you know, McNally and those guys with 300,000 followers. I don't want to be, I don't want to be, it's not, that I don't care, it's that I don't want to be because it's not what I want to do. I have probably launched at least 50 professional photographers. So, and a whole lot of other people who make pretty good money on the, on the weekends and on the side, if you want to. I have a lot of people who join who don't want to be professional photographers, but they want to know how to shoot professionally, how to carry themselves and deliver professionally. So, exactly. uh, and yes, every week I'm going to tell you a little bit about Project 52 because yes, my goal is to get three or four of you to decide to join. So, well, just to throw in another plug for it, um, I went through it a couple of years ago, and it will change the way you look at photography, mm -hmm. and it will change it for the better. Yeah, well, yeah, I agree. Thank you. How much is the it? part that I like best about it? I, uh, Jan, did you ask how no, much it is? Well, yeah, it's eleven million dollars. I'm only looking for one guy. Eleven million. <laughs> eleven okay. million. I teach one class. I'm gone. No, it's a it's a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Yeah, it's thousand dollars. John, can I say something about P52? Sure. I I didn't plan this, folks. So <laughs> go well, ahead. Well, you know, if you're really thinking about P52, join because it it truly would change the way you see, the way you operate your camera, it truly will change your photography exponentially for the better, improve. Mm -hmm. Thank you, so, that was very nice. Um, it, it, since I joined, I have learned so, so much. And uh, I, I came with a different background in photography and it has changed completely the way I photograph, the way, it, I mean, you really, really learn and not only that you you become friends you have friends all over the world it's it's really a phenomenal phenomenal didn't we just, didn't we just have a meetup somebody from the u.s met up with somebody from spain i think yeah um so you know there's there's people all over the world we have photographers in south africa europe the uk uh south america uh, united states and canada a couple from the from uh, the the far eastern areas. Uh, we got a couple from Taiwan, um, but mostly uh, European and uh, uh, several stars in South Africa. Interestingly enough. So, anyway, enough of my advertising. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I will put something up to let you know what we're going to do next week. So we will have two meetings, a little bit of break in in between, like a fifteen minute break. Uh, so that if you know if you're in the first selection, you can come to the second. I will mark it off like we're going to stop at this name and then we're going to pick it up at this time. So uh, we'll go from there. Everybody have a great one and we will see you next time. Take care. Thanks, Thanks so much. much. Thank you. you all take, take care. care. Good night, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 B